o aceptar las consecuencias. Plata o plomo. Hello, welcome to another video by yours truly. Um, today we're going to show you how easy it is to make yourself uh, four into one merge collectors for your turbo manifolds using this really handy tool. Now this tool is uh, an LPSC CV3. Um, it's from a guy called Justin Linder, LPS Fab. Um, really trick bit of kit. Um, all you know detailed machined components to make this merge collector tool um, and today we're going to show you how to use it so the first thing you need to do is cut yourself um, some slugs now this is inch and a quarter uh, schedule 10 um, and we've cut them 90 millimeters long or roughly three and a half inches for you yanks out there so what we need to do is the way this tool works is that this tool works out your your compound rotation so it's not just as simple as rotating 90 degrees um, so today i'm going to show you how to make a 20 degree merge collector which is uh what i like to use the most um so what we need to do is we need to first mark the tube and to do this we'll just use a square fine tip marker and just put a line all the way down the tube, like so. Now I've worked out roughly that my compound rotation needs to be approximately 97 degrees. I'm sure there'll be some people in the comments that will correct me on that. Um, but I worked out for a 20 degree collector, it needs to be roughly 97 degrees on the rotation. So how do you work that out? So this is the collector cutting fixture. And as you can see, we've got some uh, we've got some degrees on the side there, so you can set the, your pitch angle of your collector. Obviously, I set it 20 degrees. Um, and what you can see here is you can see a lot of notches around here. I can show you the angle, of, your, your, sorry, your rotational cut. And you can see there, I've got marked 90 or well, zero at this side, and we've got 95 at this side. Now, the way this works is that it. it shows you notches and in increments of five degrees so that's why it's a bit difficult to get exactly 97 but we've got our uh, base rotation now from zero to 95 then we just need to obviously rotate it slightly past 95 to get our 97 degree rotation so how this works is is what i like to do is as i've already just said i like to just put a, a marker pen on zero and 95 and then what we need to do is this line that we've already pre-drawn um, on our little uh, slug here so now we need to put a slug in the jig now what we need to do is we need to line up this mark here to the zero mark on the fixture and tighten it down line up and then what you end up is with that and you can see how the line on the slug is lined up with the the zero point on the fixture stick that in your bandsaw do your first cut keep the fixture clamped in to the vise in the bandsaw loosen loosen the fixture and what you need to do is you need to rotate you need to rotate this round you need to rotate that mark around to the next part on the rotation the, the rotation uh, gauge there um i've set it in 95 degrees just to give you an example but if you were to cut this obviously we want 97 so we'd go roughly in between um obviously 95 and 100 degrees there and that's where we you know we would cut that slug so that's the boring explanation process over so we're going to quickly cut all four of our slugs in the bandsaw and then we'll show you the results once we've got them all cut. So we've got the cutting fixture uh, clamped in our vise and our bandsaw that we've got here. And we've got our slug marked out at zero degrees. So we'll just go ahead and cut this quickly. So 
we've done our first cut, so now we're gonna loosen it from the fixture. And we'll take that mark round, 95 degrees, and then just slightly over to roughly 97. Lock it down, and then go for a second cut. all four pieces cut now what we need to do is we need to clean these up and um, give them a quick linish um, before we can actually put them together to make a, a collector now one thing you will find is I'm not sure if you can just see there is you can see where it's just sort of the blades walked off the edge of the tube here now no matter what I do no matter how slow I cut with my bandsaw um, that will always happen, you know, I've just accepted it's going to happen um, but it's it's really simple to fix with an angle grinder with like a, a little flat wheel or we're just going to use a linisher so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly clean all four of these up give them a quick polish and we'll tack them together So after a quick going on, on the linisher, that's the result we've got. As you can see, we've got rid of this little uh, this little lip, this little tang. So all we need to do now is repeat the process we've done on this one with the other three. So there we have all four segments linished flat. And we'll just briefly show you um, how well they match up together. If I can get it on camera, um, I mean, you can see we've got a real, real tiny gap there down at the bottom. Same on this side. It's not the end of the world, you know. You, you really are going to struggle to get all four of these, you know, absolutely perfect. Um, depends on your bandsaw and how well your bandsaw set up. I know mine, for example. Um, you can probably actually just see it here. Actually, you can just see where this piece here hasn't been caught by linisher. And that's because when my when my bandsaw arm comes down right at the end, it does sort of shimmy right at the end, um, and it does that on pretty much even on this one. It does it on pretty much every single cut. It's quite like it's a bit worse on that one, um, but yeah, that's, that's nothing to worry about. So uh, we'll go get all these polished up, and then we'll get on to the next step. That's all four segments polished, linished, and deburred, ready to weld together. Uh, but there's one very important step uh, we have missed, and I have missed it a few times myself, and not realised until I've actually welded the collector together and started to use it. Uh, but before we weld all these together, we actually need to put a bevel on the end of this collector before we weld them before we weld them together otherwise it's just going to be nigh impossible to get a decent bevel on you know once all four are welded together so we'll just go quickly bevel all these and then we'll get it all tacked together
both halves tacked together. So now we're gonna go back over there to the linisher and we're gonna linish both of these mating faces uh, flat again, just so we get a better join. Uh, but I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see in there, but um, there's pretty much, there's a slight gap there. Um, but by the time we've linished that, that gap will be non-existent. So uh, let's go do that now. the merge collector all tacked up really happy with how this collector's come out um, just going to try and show you inside there on the camera all the gaps have closed up uh, really happy about it's come out look at my ugly face through there um, so yeah the next step would be is we would then cut this the collector down to the required hole size whether it be like a, a Garrett GTV band uh, T2 T3 uh, TFO 35 uh, TDO 5 whatever um, and then once we put it down, we would weld the inside and then we would weld the outside and then finally weld this to the flange. So if you're interested in seeing what manifold we use, uh, we use this collector for, click the video card just here. Um, we build a, uh, a Colt Caesar T TFO 35 stock location tubular manifold. Um, and this is the exact collector we're going to use in that build just now. Um, so yeah. So once again, thank you for joining us, watching this video. Um, if this video has been anywhere helpful to you, consider giving a, a video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe, share, tell your nan, all that bullshit. If you have any suggestions for any future videos, uh, pop a comment down below. Um, if you're interested in seeing uh, how I fabricate bits and bobs or tips and tricks of the trade, um, just ask down below and we'll consider making a video, be a, a video about it. Um, so yeah. Thank you for watching and we'll see you shortly in the next video.